If you've been using Outlook for a while, you may recognize the red flags that you can use. Some of you may use them, some of you may not, but there are probably a lot of features you didn't know were there. I'll show you how to use flags in Outlook email effectively today on Tuesday Tech Training. Hello and welcome to Tuesday Tech Training. My name is Jennifer Stewart. I'm the owner of Gateway Productivity and I'm a tech and productivity trainer. Today I want to teach you all about Outlook flags. These are the little red flags that you can put on your emails in Outlook. And you can do this both on the web version and in the app on your computer. A lot of my clients will flag emails, but they don't really understand what's happening. They don't know that there's multiple types of flags. There are different shortcuts you can set. And you can even set reminders for your flags in the Outlook app. All of these pieces put together can make the flag system much more beneficial to you. Let's look at how to do all of these things. We'll be spending our time today in the Outlook app, but a lot of these features are available in the web version, especially using the flags and setting the different days for the flags, which you'll see in a second. First of all, let's look at where is the flag. For most people, if you select an email, you do have a flag icon that appears. These are called your quick actions. If you don't see a flag here, let's look briefly at how to change your quick actions. You can right click in the blue space, go down to set quick actions, then it will pop this up. I'm gonna move my picture here. And here you can see the two quick actions that you can choose. So those are the two little icons that are going to appear. There's a few options available. If you're frequently archiving, you might wanna use that one. Here is our flag and clear flag. If you don't have that as one of your options, then you'll want to make sure and change that. So what happens when we click that flag? Let's go here, we'll click the flag with the shortcut, and really all it does is it makes this yellow and it gives you a red flag. But what is that really telling you? Yes, it's telling you that this is an important email, but what else does it tell you? Most people don't realize that when you click this flag, it is marking it for a specific day that it's due. This then interacts with either your tasks or your Microsoft To Do. If we go to Microsoft To Do, we can see that if I go to my flagged emails, of course it shows up in there. But then if I go to my planned items, it also shows up in there because it automatically set it as today, as the due date, which means it also shows up in the My Day area. So to recap briefly, if you just use the flag in this way, it is defaulting to having it due today. You have additional options. Have you learned something new from this video and you'd like to see more videos in the future? If so, you can click the subscribe button below this video. Once you do that, you'll see a bell icon. If you click the bell icon, you'll receive notifications each time a new video is posted. If you would like this email to be due on a different day, you can go to your follow-up up here. Some of you may see a flag only. Some of you may see multiple iterations of this. It should be in your tags area regardless. So we're looking for this follow-up. Here you can see you can mark these as any day that you want. It could be tomorrow, this week, next week. It could have no date at all, or you can set a custom date. If you're someone who is using Tasks or Microsoft To Do, this is a very beneficial because it starts to show your emails on the dates that they're due instead of always being today. You can also use the shortcut to mark an email as complete. If you click the flag a second time, it will give you a check mark, which means that this is complete. If you didn't mean to put the flag on there, you can always go up here to this follow up and clear the flag, which will remove it completely. If you would like to change what is chosen when you click on the flag with the shortcut, you can do that. That is called your quick click. You can go here to your follow up and set quick click here. That determines when you click the little flag which day it defaults to. So if you would rather it always default to tomorrow, you can do that. 
the automatic default is always today. Lastly, it can be really helpful to have a reminder pop up when you need to work on an email. You can do that by clicking again in the follow-up area. You may have to go to tags depending on what your ribbon looks like. And then you can set add reminder. Now, unfortunately, this is not available in the web version as far as I've seen, but you can do this in the Outlook app on your computer. So we can add a reminder and it defaults to today because that is what the flag was set for, but you can change it to whatever you would like. If you need to forward it, read it, reply, whatever you need to do, you can set a custom reminder. You can set your due date to whatever you'd like. It doesn't matter what the flag was when you set it. You can set your reminder however you'd like. And then you can set your time right here. And if you decide you don't want the flag at all, you could actually clear the flag at this time. Now that you know all of the elements of the Outlook flags, hopefully you can build a little bit better process so that instead of just flagging emails and having them disappear, now you can have some reminders or you can set them for dates that you really need. And then you can use Microsoft Tasks or To Do to start to follow up on those emails. If you still feel like you need help with this or any other tech challenge, you can schedule a tech stress breakthrough call with me. You can do that by clicking on the heart in the monitor that's above me now, or you can go to gatewayproductivity.com, which is my website, and you can click on the Let's Talk button to schedule your time. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.